Okay. Hi, Greta. Uh, hi. Just, we're just testing to make sure we have you on the line. And uh, Joe Cat. If everyone could take their seats, we'll go ahead and get started. If committee members, uh, if uh, we need to speak during this meeting, you can go up to either microphone uh, and speak for uh, roll call votes. And if just a yay or nay, you can just stay from your seat. And uh, we're going to have, uh, as we do our uh, roll call today, uh, we're going to, we have new members here, so we'd like to ask everyone to, uh, as your name is called, just come up and give a very quick synopsis of who you are, what you do. So we have, uh, the new members have an opportunity to understand who the rest of the committee members are. All right, it is, uh, 
Thursday, March 25th, 2021, 6 p.m., call the meeting of the Independent Sales Service Tax Oversight Committee to order. We welcome everyone, and if we could get the roll call. You're good. Uh, Jill Mazurkowitz. Here. Uh, I'm Joe Mazurkowitz, uh, it is my honor to have been chair for the last two years. I'm president of BJM Consulting, a local government consulting firm. I am a 52-year resident of Lee County, graduate of the Lee County School System. Dennis Perlman. Joe Caddy. Here. Um, I'm the um, chairman and CEO of Mark National Bank and Trust, and I volunteer for a lot of organizations in our community. Frederick Atkins. Frederick Atkins. Uh, I've been on the board for the last two years. Uh, retired from general. And Fred Elliott is absent and he's excused. Michelle Perez. Here, uh, I am Michelle Perez Macias. I am a small business owner of the PA, been here since 2005, and the current chair of the Southwest Water and Aquatic Chamber. And I have been with the uh, board since inception as well. James Dozier. I'm retired military. Uh, I've been active with the junior ROTC here in Lee County for a number of years and continue to be. And I sit on a number of boards. I'm glad to be on this one. Brian Rist. Meeting. I'm Brian Rist. I'm the executive chairman of Storm Smart. I, uh, I guess I've been part of this firm beyond said. I, I was actually part of the whole park when we passed the initiative. I was an alternative, an alternate for a while, and, and now I'm playing a, a voting role. I probably serve on six or seven different boards around Lee County, and I've been here for almost 30 years. Thank you. Dan Severson, he's one of our new Chris Simino. Present. Uh, Chris Simino. I'm the Chief Foundation Development Officer. I run external affairs for Lee Health. Been a resident of Lee County for eight years and uh, two kids graduated from the school system and I have one at Sparrow High School. <laughs> Greta Campbell. I'm Greta Campbell, retired from Lee County School District and I've served on the committee for Years. Steve Shimp. I'm Steve Shimp. I'm a retired general contractor. Uh, I've built in a number of schools in Lee County while I was working. Uh, I have two children who are products of the Lee County Public Schools. They now both live in town, and now I have four grandchildren in the schools. And I was also involved in establishing the foundation for the Lee County Public Schools. Thank you. I'm vice chair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Miss Gittens. I don't know if this is on. I can speak loud. <laughs> I'm Gwen Gittens. I apologize for being late, but uh, uh, snowbirds and uh, the vacationers are here. Sorry to say. I am very glad to be the liaison to this group and. Uh, I, I just regret we only meet four times because it's very interesting and um, with us being able to let the public know what we're doing and understand what we're doing with all of the, uh, the well-earned tax money for the students of Lee County. So thank you. Dr. Atkins.
<laughs> Welcome, everyone, and thank you for being here. And we appreciate uh, our two members who are participating via the phones. Next item on our agenda is approval of the prior minute meeting minutes meeting minutes. Um, they were distributed for your review. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I'm sorry, Mr. Mazurkowitz, if we could just take one more second. I'm sorry, we missed introducing one of our new members and I apologize. Can we back up and introduce her and call her for the role? My apologies. Sia Sherman. <laughs> now I feel like it's just been as big to do. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Sia Sherman. I am resident of Lee County for 13, almost 14 years. My husband is a first responder in Lehigh. I am a vice chair of the Lehigh Acre Fire Control and Rescue Board, so I'm an elected official out in Lehigh. And I am very excited to be part of this board. I have two children who are in homeschool, one in going into middle school, <laughs> in high school. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. Well, welcome. Thank you. Now we'll take that motion to the approve, approve the minutes. General with a motion, Chris with a second. Any additions or corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, like sign? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the public comment. Is there any members of the public wish to address the members of the Oversight Committee. Seeing no one, we will go move on to election of new officers. As a preface to the election of new officers, I just want to uh, share the fact that it's been my honor to be your chair for the last two years. Um, I believe that the chair should rotate. Uh, follow the direction of the school board as they rotate their chair every time they reorganize and uh, would uh, hope that we could follow in that same fashion as we move forward. Uh, the, w the way I, we'll run the, uh, the uh, election is the, Got it. I'll open the floor to nominations. Nominations do not need to be seconded and we'll determine how the vote will be taken depending on how many nominations we get for each position. Any questions with regard to the process? All right, hearing none, the floor is open for the position of chair. Nominations for chairman, chairperson. I nominate Steve Shim. We have a nomination of Mr. Shim. Any other nominations? I'm afraid that was <laughs> Quick before he decides not to take it. Other nominations for chair. Hearing no other nominations, is there any objections to the floor being closed to nominations? Hearing no objections, the floor is closed to nominations. So seeing we only have one nomination for chair, there is no need for an election. Mr. Shimp, it's your meeting to run. Congratulations. <sighs> you're gonna, you're gonna make me work <laughs> Mr. Shimp, they said they're doing it like the board. That's what happens. You get sworn in and you go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Joe, I, I did notice one side benefit <clears throat> of sitting up here. And if you move six feet away, I'd appreciate it. And I will exercise that privilege. Uh, <laughs> the mask. <laughs> I'm, I'm more than six feet away from the world at this point. Uh, thank you. Um, I. Uh, Unfortunately, played golf this afternoon, so I wasn't in my office, which I don't have anymore as a retiree, to uh, receive the packet of information. So I'm working from this sheet, and I hope I do okay for you. Uh, our next item is the education information ca campaign, and Norma Lancaster, I would call on her. Absolutely. So, oh. I'm sorry, just a, a couple more items for the elections. Mr. Chair, oh, okay. we do need um, a vice chair. So we'll need to hold nominations and election for that. And as well, the chair needs to appoint a recording secretary for the year. The 
chair needs to. Yes, according to the policy, the chair shall appoint one, I guess okay. based on any willing volunteers maybe, but uh, it's just an appointment as opposed to an election for the recording secretary. Very good. I think I know how I'll handle that because it went well last the last couple of years. Um, are there any nominations for vice chair? General? Fred Atkins. <laughs> Say that again for me. He don't look to her. Say it again. Any other nominations? He said there, Fred Atkins. Pardon me? There being no other nominations, uh, I would uh, suggest that we would close the nominations and that that be the election. Same as I got railroaded into this position. <laughs> and I Fred, I'm sure you'll do great at this. Uh, and, and Fred, No good deed goes unpunished, Fred. <laughs> um, as far as recording secretary for the last two years, who has that been? That's been Miss Greta Campbell. Is Greta? Um, She's on the phone. Yeah, Greta, are you willing to continue in that position? It has gone well. I think, they, I think like the other position, that that position should rotate. <laughs> okay. Greta, I was terrified that that was the answer you're going to give me. Is there anyone that would like to volunteer for that position? I don't. Greta, could you give us an idea how how demanding that is? Not very demanding. Um, I took minutes. I passed them on to Jeannie, and she um, edited them or added as needed, and we worked together. And she is a very strong supporter, so it's not very, it doesn't take much. <laughs> Being said, is there, a, uh, is there a volunteer? I'd like to defer and, and consult with staff on that appointment and make it at our next meeting. And Greta, would you take minutes through this meeting, please? Because I can't see who's making motions, it's a little difficult. Well, then I would hope that staff would be able to handle the minutes this time. Can you handle the minutes okay. this time? Yes, sir. Let's do it that way. They'll get you a draft, Greta, and then we'll go from there. Thank and, you, Kyle. And by our next meeting, I will have someone who I have <clears throat> appointed. Not a problem. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Does that take care of us as far as officers? Yes, sir. Thank you. If we could move on to the education and information campaign in Irma. Hello everyone, good evening, thank you for having me here. Uh, the communications team has been working uh, diligently along with business services to gather information and present you with what we from the communications team here at the district can do as far as uh, letting our community know what's been happening over the past two years since we first started receiving funds from the sales tax. So what we thought this would be a good time because I believe when we first started receiving funds was back in uh, March of 2019, so we are at the two-year mark. So one of the first things that we had been working on was a change for change report uh, to highlight some of the things that happened over the last two years. That's how this started. And then we decided to create, uh, based on some of the feedback that we listened to during your last meeting, some more accompanying information to better educate the community. So this is what I'm gonna present to you. So most, this is our timeline in our communications team to ensure that our team is constantly working on putting out information. So where we are now is that the annual report has been created. We have updated the dashboard page, which I will show you shortly. So the dashboard page now also includes a video update that highlights the last two years. It has some more information that's very specific to the school, so that if you're looking for your specific schools, which we know a lot of parents just wanna know what's happening at their school, it makes it a little bit easier for them to see it. We've added some visuals as well. And uh, we also put together a media summary because we did hear a lot of feedback from 
the committee that they wanted to see more media. So we just wanted to ensure that you were aware that there has been continuous media coverage over the past two years of a lot of projects that are related to uh, the sales tax. So this is kind of the debut of what we've been doing. So this stuff just went live today because I wanted to share it with you before we put it out to the community tomorrow. I did not hit play, so I don't know. Oh, so it's getting ahead. Someone's excited to see the video. Yes, I know, I know. Let's, uh, I'm gonna go to the page first. So I'm gonna go back. So as you know, if you go to the home page, you especially, I'm sure, are very familiar with how to get to the dashboard. So now when you click the dashboard link, instead of just seeing the dashboard, at the top of the page you'll see this video summary. Basically just highlighting again what's happened over the last two years. We updated the, updated the tiles. So the first tile you'll see is the report that we worked on, which is in your agenda packet, so you may have already reviewed it. So this is available online. And it's made up of some of the projects that show, it first has a letter that is from the committee, basically something we put together that's an overview of what's taken place and a little bit of information on the committee. Some of the expenses, some of the highlights of the four areas, which is construction, maintenance, safety and security, and technology. So you can all, peruse that at your leisure. So here again is where you go to the, to the dashboard if you just want to see the dashboard. If you go to the next tile, it's sales tech dashboards for individual schools. So if you really just are interested, I go, my kids go to Allen Park, I just want to see what specifically happened there. You can go to the schools and you can click on the school, your individual school to see what's happening there. So you could do that before, but it was a little bit more challenging to find if you're not familiar with the dashboard. So now you can just go to the list of schools and click it. So currently, all of the schools list the dashboard and our goal is to have a little bit more color on each page, maybe some photos and some specifics showing what's happening. That's something we're gonna work on over the next couple of months because obviously that's gonna take time. But we did have Allen Park ready, so we're just gonna show you kind of what that'll look like. So we'll focus on the four areas and show photo or photos of some of what's been happening. So obviously we don't have any construction at Allen Park right now, but we have had some safety and security updates, technology and maintenance. And then you can scroll down and you can still see the dashboard if you're interested in seeing that. And all of those pages will be updated again over the next few months. Mm -hmm. We're also going to um, working on creating PDFs. So let me pull that up so you can see. When initially the sales tax campaign was taking place, there were PDFs highlighting what would happen at each school. Some of the uh, great things that could happen at that school when uh, if the sales tax was passed. So what we're doing is we're just updating each of those PDFs, which will also go on the website, but will also be available at the schools once we're back open. So if parents happen to be there, they can pick up a PDF and they can see what's been happening there. So I'll take you back to the page. Here we also have the tile with the media coverage, which we just started working on. So. I'm not, we don't, we only have a few months, but I can show you the long list from our documents, which is here. So if you go back to January 2019, you can see that every single month since the sales tax was approved, there's been extensive media coverage. So we thought it'd be important, not just for the committee, but also for the public to see that. So we're building all of that content that I just showed you onto the website as well. And then we also will be working on quarterly videos to highlight what's been happening uh, in relation to the sales tax. So we're working on that playlist. And these, are the, these other tiles were already there to explain capital versus operational funds, financial audits, and of course, information about the ISOC committee. So now I'm gonna share the video with you that work, worked on by our team, specifically Adam Wright, who is back behind the scenes tonight helping manage this meeting, so 
If you like it, please make sure you let him know. Now, which where, where is it? It is on here. Okay. In November 2018, Lee County voters chose to invest in education by passing the half cent sales tax referendum. Since then, more than $163 million in tax revenue has been collected to use on projects aimed at helping us reach our mission of becoming a world-class school system. So far, we've spent more than $93 million of that revenue collected. Of that, more than $31 million has gone towards maintenance projects. These projects include new HVAC units at schools like Fort Myers High, Three Oaks Middle, Cape Elementary, and more. New roofs at schools like G. Weaver Hips Elementary, Calusa Middle, Cypress Lake High, and more. New windows, new fire alarms, and sprinkler systems, and electrical and lighting upgrades at several schools. When our facilities are maintained the way that they should, then it makes that a prime learning environment for all of our students. More than $29 million has been spent on improving and upgrading safety and security measures at schools across the district, such as the installation of brand new state-of-the-art surveillance systems. Adaptive technologies such as artificial intelligence, for example, to complement will allow our cameras to think like humans and to help the personnel on, on site make decisions of whether there's a threat or not. We've also spent more than $16 million on technology, increasing the amount of Chromebooks at more than three dozen schools. And we've added modernized interactive AV systems to more than two dozen schools so far. And finally, to keep up with our ever-growing population, we've spent more than $16 million building new schools and expanding current campuses, including a new addition for the JROTC program at Lehigh Senior High School. The benefits of this building are allowing us to uh, properly train and educate our 1,322 cadets. Uh, before, we were kind of packed in on top of each other. Now we have enough classroom space. A brand new pre-K center on the campus of James Stevens International Academy, a new campus for Lehigh Acres Middle, and the all-new Gateway High School campus is nearly complete. I feel confident that I will be able to succeed because if you're the graduate, if you're the first graduating class of a high school, then you set the standard. Moving forward, we have a lot of new projects in the works, including two more new schools, and we will continue to be good stewards of taxpayer money. I can't thank the community enough for their support. This new funding source allows us to build the schools we need to meet the growth challenges that we have, not just today, but also into the future. It helps us to make our schools more secure. It also helps us put technology in the hands of our students to meet their needs so it prepares them for the world tomorrow. For more information, visit leeschools.net and click on the sales tax dashboard icon on the homepage. Thank you. So what happens with all this information other than it's all on our website? So what we're the next step after sharing with you, uh, we will be putting out a news release tomorrow, uh, sharing with the media and community that uh, we've there's been a lot going on over the past two years. So check some of this out. Obviously, this uh, video can't show everything, but it's I think a very good overview, and really gives a nice picture of what's been happening. Once we put out the media release, we expect to get some media coverage. Uh, and again, what, what we want to do on an ongoing basis, so we don't, we want to celebrate that we're at the two year mark and this is all the great stuff that's happened, but we don't want it to just go away after this. So in an effort to keep the, the information going, we will uh, be creating videos every quarter. We will be uh, reaching out to the media even more often than we already are if there's a big project that we feel would be of media interest. Uh, we invite you to join us in that effort as well if you have any contacts or if you are available to, as an ISOC committee member, go out and also talk about the great things that are happening. Uh, we can help you uh, or you can help us coordinate any interviews if you wish. Uh, and if you want to do any presentations to any other groups you're a part of, we're happy to help you put those together. There's so much great information already that's presented on a regular basis to the board that it's easily 
uh, it is easy enough to repurpose for U.S. committee members if you so wanted to. We're also going to be doing uh, social sales tax Tuesdays on social media. So every Tuesday we'll be highlighting something that's happening either at a school or or well just a small project or big project. We'll be we'll be doing those highlights as well. So we'll just be keeping this going uh, all year long, and then. Every year, we'll have another report that comes out that'll be updated uh, onto our website. And then I'm not sure, uh, Dr. Desmore, uh, if you're going to, if your team plans on printing any of these copies for the annual report and putting them out in any other way. I know we had talked about that, so so that's a discussion that we're also having as well. Um, and of course, we have two big events that we're going to be planning for this year. Uh, is our a ribbon cutting for Gateway as well as the ribbon cutting for the new lamb. So that's also very exciting and we hope that you'll be a part of that as well. And that will also be covered by our team but also by the media of course. And I think I got, that's a little bit of an overview of what we are doing. So I'm happy to answer any questions, I think. Can I do that? Yes. If anybody has any questions, okay. Or if we any talked questions? about anything I missed. Nope. I have okay. one question, um, and, and unfortunately you may have mentioned it somewhere in here and I might have missed it because of my hearing, but I, is there any plan to uh, go out, for example, to service clubs? You know, the people that arrange speakers at service clubs um, are always appreciative of when one pops up that would be of interest, and it could be that there's a point in time when we ought to reach out to the Kiwanises, the Rotaries, the service clubs that meet regularly. Uh, they're normally not repetitious in to who you're speaking to. Each audience will be unique because few people are members of multiple clubs. And I just suggest that you think about that. Yes, yes. So that's a little bit about what I mentioned. Uh, you know, I know Dr. Atkins and a lot of our staff does regularly go out to different groups, depending on what topic we're sharing. I mean, there's always so much going on. So this is kind of what I was mentioning that we can create one not just for our staff but even for you as committee members if you had a group that you wanted to go out to speak to as an ISOC member and talk about on your from your perspective not just with the information we provide for you but as a perspective from a committee member so we're happy to do that. Fred? We're not having a press conference. We're putting out a press release tomorrow, and from that, we will be doing media stories. Okay. Uh, so basically, what it is is that you know they can come on and they can record a story based on the two years, based on what's been happening over the two years. But there won't be like a podium where there's a bunch of cameras because we want it to be visual. We don't want it to be someone at a podium speaking to the media. So for this purpose, we are not doing a press conference. We're doing a press release that will go out tomorrow morning. And we questions? Nope. Uh, and I may have missed it, but I'm sure. looking through all the different um, information, whether it's the PDF or the website or the video. I, I think that um, for me, visually, just thinking about it, is that we have a very prominent logo for the HACCP tax, and so I wonder if that's something that we need to put more you know, just kind of like we have like the lead TV or lead sports TV logo on top of the video. And I'm not suggesting we redo the video because I know that it's supposed to go quickly. But, you know, in, in the future, okay. if we continue to have mm -hmm. that logo visible in anything that comes from the half set tax so that the community begins mm -hmm. to associate the work that we're doing with the information that's coming up. Sure, sure. We like that suggestion. And and we are creating a specific playlist on our YouTube channel that's specific to sales tax projects. So we like that that addition. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Next item is our uh, standard review of the sales tax funded projects. Uh, Amy? Oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Harm, appreciate that. All right, so thank you. Each of you all received a, a copy of this presentation. 
Um, so we're going to go through uh, all the information through it and feel free to ask questions as you have them. So just to start out, and um, we we update these numbers as we go. These updated number, the numbers that we're looking at today have been updated as of uh, March 15, uh, because of course they change daily. So as of that point, it, it's important to note that incredibly 32% of our capital revenue exists because we have this funding source. So as the video talked about, an incredible vote of confidence and support from our community and a big boost to um, the revenue sources that we had had in order to accomplish some very important work. And then this pie chart depicts the distribution of the sales tax between our four major categories of construction, technology, safety, and maintenance. So as of this point, uh, pretty you know evenly divided between those. Of course, those construction numbers represent uh, the debt service related to those projects, not necessarily the total project cost, but what had been spent to date so far in the debt service for each of the new school projects or construction projects that uh, we've talked about to this point. So let's move into the status update on some of our major projects funded by the sales tax. And we have our resident experts in the house um, in each area that are on hand to talk about them. So first we'll talk about our new schools and major renovations. And I have with us today, Mr. Scott Rickenbacker, who's our director of construction to uh, take us through some of the information for each of the, cat for each of the major projects. And Scott, you're either welcome to come up here to the dais or just down to the podium, whichever is comfortable for you. Okay. Good evening, ISOC committee and new members. Thank you for your service. First of all, I'm Scott Rickenbacker. I'm the director of the Construction Services Department for Lee County Schools. I've been with the district 16 years, and this is the second wave of a large building program that we're going to, and the effort that you guys have, have put forth with the tax revenue will certainly help us get to that goal. So obviously the, the crown jewel, which believe it or not, tomorrow we are taking substantial completion of that building officially. We've already received our C of O. The uh, uh, principal is on site moving furniture in, fitting out the school, it was there today. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I can't wait for that ribbon cutting ceremony where all you folks I'm sure will be participating as well as with the board members. Wow. Uh, we are under, just so you know, we are under budget. We have not use the project contingency to date, nor the owner's contingency. So we expect uh, once the audit is, is finalized that there'll be a return of, of uh, funding back to the district on that project. You can see some of the pictures, you're looking at some side shots, some gang restrooms, uh, there's our media center inside, the kitchen cafeteria, and nope. looks like a science, I can't see that far, I'm getting old. It looks like the production room, because it's a green room. That's the media center projection room. Oh, okay. And the, yeah, and the kitchen. Uh, the picture to the left is our main administration building. That's the front entry desk. S picture in the center is our main gymnasium, which for you guys to understand, we just met with EOC out there today. That will be a Lee County shelter space. We met with EOC for uh, precursory training to them. Uh, they really like the facility. That's a picture of the inside of the gym with the uh, Gateway Eagles logo. And then the sports field lights at night that we lit up with the new uh, high intensity LED lights. MM Middle School, uh, it's about 80% complete. That's a $54 million project on budget, on schedule. The project contract date for substantial completion is July 15th, but all indications are right now we may be able to deliver it to the district for substantial in uh, mid-May. Now you can see that picture. And if you go back one slide, if you see that red dashed area, that is gonna be the new school you heard about, Elementary School J, which will be uh, has gone through the board. They've picked our architect, construction manager, and building official for that project. We're preparing for negotiations. And in combination with that site, we also will be doing an addition on the MM building. The number growth in the East District is commanding that we put a 12 classroom addition on that building. So we will be having occupied school and we also will be putting an addition on there for 12 additional classrooms. 
What formerly was two schools, our elementary prototype and our middle school prototype, have been melded together down in Estero, and the new contract name for that will be Quadruple A, and it's a pre-K-8 center in Estero Village. Tonight is the night that they're having their, one of their first community forums. There's a lot of information coming out about that school. Uh, we're at about 70% design. Uh, the numbers are, are holding in. Obviously, they have a lot of built-in design contingencies in that right now. Uh, but we're, we're standing where the uh, architect is estimating construction costs, not total project costs, of around $74 million, and the construction manager is about um, 68. Now, those numbers will come tighter and tighter as we get to it, and then I apply all of our district FF&E, which is furniture, technology, and things into that, and then I come to the board with a total project cost. So we have to come to the board yet, but the partners have been selected for that job. Roofing projects uh, were just about complete on Cypress Lake High School, as well as uh, North Fort Myers High School. Those are major total re-roofs. The center job, G. Weaver Hips, that was a maintenance job, which is complete. So you can see our substantial completion is 521 on Cypress Lake High School roof, and North Fort Myers will be complete in uh, May, 4, 5? Uh, yeah, four, five. April, okay. April. April. HVAC projects, we're engaged right now in a couple of HVAC renovations at Cape Coral Elementary School, which is underway, occupied campus, as well as Fort Myers High School, which is, uh, is being completed and we're in punchless phase as well. Fort Myers Technical College, uh, we have a $10 million retrofit for the technical school and a $2.5 million roof replacement, so we're making a combo project out of that, that was the RFQ. All of the partners, the architect, construction manager have been selected and we'll be, begin negotiations with them and obviously come to the board with a total project cost for that. James Stevens pre-K was completed by substantial completion December 31st, this past December of 20. Uh, they're in, they're using it, it's a beautiful facility and the federal people are just finishing up the installation of some of the playground equipment through their budget line. Riverdale High School, the RFQ has gone out and the participants, architect, construction manager, or building official have been picked. Uh, we're getting ready to negotiate and I will be coming to the board with a total project cost. The budgeted number right now is 41 million for the entire program. It's gonna be a, a multi-year -fa phase project, about a year of master site plan that we bring back to these committees and to the board and the superintendent and uh, then we'll have a construction start. And okay. right. any questions? We're spending millions and millions creating tremendous numbers of jobs. I, I assume we're, we're tracking the amount of, of funds that are going to local businesses or other businesses in our community and the jobs that are created. I'm thinking, you know, down the road for when we go back and try to renew this if necessary that we have a story about what this, what these funds created. Do we, do we track that? Well, uh, I don't track it, but I can give you some history. Um, with the money that was available from the tax money that we had received, COVID hit, surprised us all. Uh, you'll notice that the accelerated schedule on Gateway High School was done in about 15 months. Same with uh, the OAK job at MM Middle School. We realized an unlimited amount of labor because these people were out of work. And we had a project, we had funding, we were able to get great buys in our projects and our materials and our labor and, and have unlimited labor source, even through COVID, with very minimal exposures and so forth. We had protocols to handle that. So I think in a time where the community could have, mostly workforce, uh, could have been really hurt badly, that the money that was provided through this tax revenue supported this county greatly. Can I suggest that that become part of the communication plan as we roll this out, that we are creating jobs, supporting local businesses. Uh, I mean, this, this is what this, these funds are doing. Absolutely. And, and as Amy said, one of the things you have to be aware of is you're seeing the tax service, uh, 14 million for the Lehigh Seniors Edition, um, uh, almost 2 million for the James Stevens Pre-K, 54 million total project for MM Middle School, 98 million total project for Gateway High School. Uh, the pre-K-8 down in Estero is obviously going to be upwards of around 80, 75, 80 in that area. So 
these are these are funds where a lot of people are out of work and you know hopefully we're hearing the rumors about material shortages now because other parts of the country the factories have stopped but if we can keep the materials flowing with the work that we're able to accomplish uh, i think we, we're helping the community tremendously okay other questions Thanks. yes dennis when perfect game baseball comes to town and you say that there's an economic impact of $300,000 and 15,000 hotel rooms and such, I think that that number of the <coughs> economic impact should be established and, and woven into that uh, video or, or get more specific. I think you should be able to document that number here because I would think most of the expenditure that we're, we're making are two local companies here. Um, and it's you. And you have people come up, but I think that's a, a, a I, I appreciate what you said, but that's a, that's an opinion more than a specific number. And I think we can get to a number in there, which I think would really be kind of building Yes. Go to the Regional Economic Research Institute at FGCU and have them do an economic impact analysis on this on these projects. I really do think we're pumping money into the local economy. Absolutely. We're, numbers, and we're, we're taking a half cent out of the local economy and we're putting it all back into the local economy. That's the story. At a time when jobs weren't available otherwise. Okay. All right. Yes, we can um, work to pull those specific numbers, and we'll work on uh, gathering some more data around what you're what we're talking about here. Thank you. So Scott, you brought up the material issue, and so because I'm in the construction business, I know that that's a real serious crisis, not only in its availability, but also in the price. So is, are you having to wrestle with that, or how does that happen? Luckily, what, what the, the district does is we, we have a program, it's called uh, DMP Savings, uh, Direct Material Purchase. So one of the first things we do with our construction managers on a large scale project is we take ch credit change orders for the material purchase. So the district in turn takes the material and we buy it. In many cases without all that, no sales tax, but at a discount with the arrangements worked out by our construction managers. We've been lucky, we had some really great buyouts and I'm, I'm seeing those returns in my construction GMPs and being able to reutilize and repurpose some of those dollars, not the tax savings, but those savings in the buy for items that may have been missed or to improve some of the design that we are working on. I haven't seen any escalation in costs. However, I'm preparing because I'm already seeing it in, in, in your business, Mr. Rist, obviously aluminum and steel products, it's, we're already hearing that it's becoming scarce. I've, you know, and, and you would see it probably before me, and I, I'm hearing you say that it's coming, and I'm anticipating that, and we'll have to start adjusting some of my total project costs with an inflation factor, possibly. We'll do our best to, to reduce that and not utilize it, but we, I, I think it's coming, but I haven't realized it to date. We've been very fortunate. Well, that's good news, but yeah, it, it is I mean, it's kind of almost inevitable. See, all my projects, remember, it, it's a, a 14, 18 month process. So my buyout was done a year and a half ago. So I'm sure it would be a much different picture today. Other questions? Just a comment. I, um, you know, I'm not active in the industry anymore, but I'm still involved in it and in contact with people. And, and um, owners of choice buy construction projects at better prices. And if you, ha you have positioned the district as an owner of choice, and that's a very positive thing. Uh, that, that's a great thing. That's why projects are coming in under budget. Yes, very sir. Cool. We, we do our best. It's a small little group I have, six people, and uh, one person does all of our little internal accounting, and we make sure we get every tax savings dollar we can, and we process the contractor's change orders as, as promptly as, as we can to ensure that we don't get into the 30-day float. So I think everybody reaps that benefit, ultimately the district. Takes team effort. Thank you very much. So, Thank you. Yeah. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Rickenbacker. And next, to talk about some of our safety and technology projects, I have uh, Mr. Dwayne Alton, Executive Director in our technology area. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Can you hear me okay? All right, so as usual, um, we have very little details that we share about some of our safety and security projects. And for the education of our new members, I just want to share a little bit about why that is. Um, a lot of times you'll see me come up here and not give a lot of detail about some of the projects. And many of the projects that we're working on with general technology we share, but when it comes to safety and security technology, we share very little information so that we don't share a lot about our operational security capabilities within the schools. So we don't, for example, share what exact technologies we're implementing, in what quantity, and specifically which schools have been done at any given point. What I will share with you is that between the security and the technology projects, we have in this last quarter touched at least 60 campuses. Uh, 44 of those were around security projects that uh, increased the security technology within those facilities. The remainder were technology projects, and those technology projects fall into two categories typically, and one of those is the addition of um, additional computers or additional Chromebooks in our schools. And thanks to this um, sales tax referendum, thanks to the revenue that we've been able to um, acquire over the last two years, we have been able to take a program that we started during COVID, which was uh, taking elementary schools and making them one-to-one, -one, um, and we've been able to make that a permanent program. So that actually those purchases were made in this quarter. You won't see those expensed out yet because those it'll be uh, May before we expense those out, but uh, just know that that will be coming in those reports. And that's going to you know have a significant impact on our elementary school, so we're looking forward to that. The other major project that we fund under sales tax that is a general technology project is what we refer to the ATLAS project, which was um, an acronym that started years ago, but it's our advanced um, interactive technology package that are in our classrooms. And in those projects, what we do is, you may be familiar with the old smart boards that we had in the, in the classrooms. This project, what we're doing is we're removing the old smart boards and we're replacing those with 86 inch interactive panels, um, 4K, very high resolution um, systems with audio enhancement that allows the not only the audio from the system but also the teacher's voice to be heard throughout the entire classroom. In addition, um, we've upgraded some of the other technologies that they use in those interactive um, packages such as the document cameras and things like that so that the teacher has more flexibility in the classroom. Of course, with COVID, we, we began the, the planning of this and the implementation of this before COVID, but it has helped quite a bit with giving the teachers the capability to link those panels directly to their, um, their remote classes now so that when students are at home, they can actually see the teachers writing up on those whiteboards and, and things like that. So we're, we're really happy with the results of that. And as we look at this quarter, we had uh, seven completed, and then we have about six others that are in various states of completion. So um, we're on schedule with that. We're actually going to be a little bit ahead of schedule on that project as far as the sites that we're doing this year. And then the remainder of the um, programs are on schedule uh, as originally anticipated for this year with uh, one exception, and that is due to some uh, construction project that we're going to, we were originally going to be doing some work in the Lehigh Acres Middle School that is now being shifted over to the new facility so that we, we didn't obviously go in and do that work. Um, so that will be when the new Lehigh Acres Middle School opens, it will automatically have all those technologies built into it. So with that being a very vague description of our security technologies, um, does anybody have any questions? Yes. have a Chromebook today due to the sales tax that wouldn't have had it without the sales tax. And how <sighs> you want to, okay, so if you're not holding me to a number, um, you, we would be looking at, I want to say around 18,000 now, but after this school year, um, that number will be even higher. So that number will be probably around 23,000. That wouldn't have had a Chromebook without it. Correct. That, that was not in the original plan. Originally, in elementary, we had a shared program 
where we had we had um, some shared mobile computer labs with Chromebooks in them, as well as a few in the back of the classroom. Now that shifted to a complete one-to-one, -one. Um, and then of course. With COVID, we, we were forced into a one-to-one. -one. Not all of that equipment is new. Some of it was um, older equipment that was scheduled to age out. But because we have this revenue, we were able to replace that equipment instead of age it out. Instead of going back to that shared model, we're going to a full one-to-one -one implementation. And the schools then will make the decision on which grade levels are allowed to take those home daily. Uh, but that is uh, uh, completely up to the elementary schools to choose that implementation. You would have blown me away if you said 10,000. Okay, then 10,000. <laughs> yeah, no, we did. Uh, it is. It's, um, I think, probably one of the things that, that we're most proud of is that we really underestimated the impact of the use of the devices in the classroom at elementary level. We knew that we were going to see a lot of, the, a lot of usage at, outside of school, especially for those students that were in a hybrid learning model. But we found that even inside of school, the tools that they were using when they were outside have now gained adoption inside. And so we wanted to make sure that we provided an equitable level of uh, availability to those, to those students. So I think that's one of the things we're most proud of this year, which, you know, hey, an accidental benefit of uh, the COVID implementation, right? Another question? I have a question, uh, and it might be uh, better for Dr. Desmores. The uh, operating budget, has it had an increase uh, to take care of all the new technology that we're putting in place in the security systems? Because I know as a businessman, you install these systems, they require maintenance and technical people to keep them running. I can, I, I can start with that. that Could you speak to that, please? Yeah, I, I can start with that discussion. Well, one of the things that we've done is we have uh, worked very carefully to essentially capitalize a lot of the expenditures that would be uh, operating expenses. For example, we purchased the equipment with five-year warranty, with five-year accidental damage, or sorry, with three-year warranty on the Chromebooks. On the um, panels, for example, they have seven-year warranties on them. So essentially what we're doing is we're requiring that the total cost of ownership um, be in the purchase of the device. And then, of course, that device will be cycled out at its useful life and then the next the next round to go in. There are some pieces around software that will be um, operating, you know, fund $100. However, that those are minimal. And, uh, you know, regardless, we, we were going into this under the impression that, you know, we can't control our operating budgets. We know that we're going to have ups and downs and that typically goes with your election years and that we wanted to make sure that whatever model we implemented was sustainable with the sales tax referendum funding. And so we went into that with that mindset and negotiated those, uh, the TCO up front. Any other questions? And we purchased all these Chromebooks outright or did we go, did we use a leasing program? Like how did we, the method of purchase program. we we use a purchase program um, we do evaluate leases from time to time uh, leases can get a little bit sticky with how that is allowed to be funded um, so we do uh, we do reevaluate because there's a new model called device as a service that is beyond a lease typically a lease would be you you lease it for a period of time you send it back um, there's two options for a yeah. lease. There's either a $1 buyout or there's a fair market value. Right. So that's like one of the things that we, um, I work for an IT company, mm -hmm. that we will encourage our partners to buy a certain amount through a lease and then they have a $1 buyout at the end. They just continue to pay the same amount. They get refreshed product every five years or at the end of that term, whatever. That term. Right. And so we've, as we, until we can determine that we can cleanly use capital for the entire TCO. We have stayed away from leasing. However, um, we do reclaim that equipment at the end and we do resell it. So when we look at you know that program, we, we could go into a lease. We would change those programs. Obviously, we would bring that revenue back in. Um, one of the advantages of doing it with a purchase and then sale of our reclaimed assets is that the funding that comes back in through the sale goes to Fund 100. So it takes it takes our more restrictive money and the money that comes back in becomes you know more flexible i guess is, is the way you would put it so and up until covid um that model was working extremely well for us until we had to reuse some of that reclaimed equipment now i will say that had we been on a lease one of the challenges would have been um to determine whether to refresh or buy back that 
you know, at that, at that $1 value. But now with um, the models that some of the manufacturers are offering where they call it device as a service and they handle device management, things like that, we're looking at those models. Um, but again, we have to make sure that it falls strictly within capital uh, funding capabilities where we can't use the sales tax funds to do that. So that's one of the, you know, that, that's one of the big decision makers there. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Alton. And then we have uh, our maintenance experts here to talk about some of the major projects going on in that area. So with us today, we have Ms. Barbara Cedeno, Mr. Jimmy Thompson, and Mr. Jim Spurlock. I meant to tell you that's the truth. <laughs> All right. Good evening, colleagues. Hope everyone is having a great day. Um, with me tonight, I have Mr. Like Ms. Dr. Desimar said, Mr. Jim Spurlock, Mr. Thompson, and myself, Barbara Cedino. We're part of the administration team at Maintenance Services. At the last ISOC meeting, my colleague shared information regarding some of our maintenance projects related to cabinets, electrical systems, and the size elevator project. This evening, I want to provide you with another update as well as provide you with some additional project photos. <clears throat> as you already know, three of our cabinetry projects are taking place at Colonial Elementary, Edgewood Elementary, and San Carlos Park Elementary. The completion percentages are 95% and 97% respectively for Colonial and Edgewood. San Carlos is scheduled to begin on April 9th. As for switch gears, this fiscal year, we are working on a total of six projects. Skyline was just completed over spring break. In December, we have an aggressive schedule to complete the remaining sites. Our department is very grateful that referendum dollars are available to perform these switch gear upgrade projects. They're considered the heart of the building's electrical system, responsible for supplying power to HVAC, voice data equipment, fire alarms, computer servers, camera systems, and many other building systems. Switch gears typically comprise of breakers, fuses, or switches, and they're responsible for the distribu distribution of power to different parts of a building. It's important that these upgrades are performed as they approach their life expectancy to avoid critical failures in a downtime to, downtime to a school. As you can see in the middle slide, on the slide on the screen, when switch gears fail, its components overheat, melt, and could create a fire within the electrical room. Jim? So this is um, one of our melted current transformers. Uh, we found this in one of our schools. And in order to get this component out, we actually had to cut it in six sections and do some minor modifications. So this school, after we did a PM servicing program, is gonna be one of our next campuses that we're gonna be performing a switch gear upgrades. The next slide is another visual of a switch gear system that has overheated and burnt um, some of its components. The next slide is our new switch gear that I mentioned earlier that was installed at Skyline Elementary. As you can see from the photo, this new switch gear is very modern and its anticipated life cycle will be 30 years. The next slide is, not, is also another view of the Skyline switch gear recently installed. In the photo, you can see new breakers, digital readouts, and connecting lugs. Our next project is the Tice Elementary Elevator Upgrade Project. With this project, we are converting the lift system from a two-piston assembly to a single hydraulic piston that provides better stabilization for the elevator cab. We're also upgrading the hydraulic pump and control valves. Concurrently, we have issued a notice to proceed and have an anticipated start date of June 21st.
A great discovery after we started this project was that we did not have to demo the roof to allow access for the work to take place. Instead, we will be able to raise the cab and lock it into an elevated position and access the elevator pit through the first floor opening for the installation of the new single hydraulic piston. And this image that you see right here is the top of the elevator um, cab that's there. The right photo, the right photo is the existing elevator floor pit, this one right here. This is where the core drilling will be done to allow installation of a single hydraulic piston. The next slide is a progressive photo of the cabinetry project at Colonial Elementary School. The microbial growth seen on the wall was an unforeseen condition that was discovered when the cabinets were removed. The microbial growth was caused by water intrusion from windows above. This photo depicts the cabinet conditions after their removal. As you notice in the corners of the cabinets, which are like these areas right here, um, this is where the fasteners were located that were holding the cabinets in place to the wall. And this is also the pathway for the water entry to those cabinets that were in place. And that's what allowed the um, microbial growth to take place. The next slide is an example of existing outdated cabinets at Edgewood Elementary School. These are approximately 20 years in age, and key issues are deterioration, delamination, failing hardware, and other unforeseen damages behind the cabinets. The new modern look offers classroom spaces a refreshed look and improved functionality. The new cabinets also brighten up the spaces and create an open feel environment. As mentioned in an earlier slide, our third cabinetry project for the year will take place at San Carlos Park Elementary School. Existing cabinets are outdated, also have failing hardware, delamination, warping, and other unforeseen damages behind existing units. This project is currently being fabricated, and after coordinating with the facility administrators, we are able to commence this project on April 9th. The first weekend, we tackle five classroom spaces, and thereafter, we will continue to work on weekends throughout the school so classroom operations are not affected. This cabinet, cabinetry project will can be completed prior to the start of the next school year. And that's all we have for tonight. So any questions? Great. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. to everyone each of these people that you all have heard from tonight are are some of our real heroes they're doing a, um, a lot of work to make all of these projects happen many dollars um, you know to spend and make improvements on with not a lot of people to uh, support that and so for all of your hard work and being here tonight to be able to highlight some of those um, you know major things that are making major impact at our schools I thank you sincerely so we have some prepared some cumulative information for you detailing how our spending has been divided up after two years. So here you're see seeing that uh, the cumulative sales tax expense by school level and zone. So after two years, as uh, Irma mentioned earlier, that we're in our two year mark, and these numbers that you're seeing here are as of February 2nd, um, within each of the categories, maintenance, safety, and technology, we left a new construction out of this view. Uh, you see how those numbers divide up by zones. And then when you get to either your total by level, you can see the percentages of schools that make up that level and the percentage of expense at each of those levels. And then also by zone, the total um, schools or the percentage of schools that are in that particular zone and then how that matches up to the percentage of expense that has happened. So that's just one look, but then when we go to others, we also have your cumulative expense by the age of the school. 
So here, again, each of the different categories, maintenance, safety, and technology, and then the synopsis over here based on the age of the school, what percentage that is of the total schools, and then what percentage of expense that age school level has seen. And then this is just maintenance only. These other ones had all three categories. And then this one is, again, by age of school, broken for maintenance uh, expenditures only, broken down in these different category levels or year levels, as you see. And then a synopsis of that information over here on the right. So just one of the pieces of information that we're keeping in order to determine are we spreading the dollars out uh, you know, appropriately? Are we hitting all the areas that we need to hit? Are we missing something? Are we making sure that we are being um, equitable by level, knowing that there are some things that, you know, you have the, your emergency, so th some things need to be done that may throw that off, but we do want to make sure that with our sales tax funds, we are being equitable in terms of the level of the school, in terms of the location of the school, the age of the school, and all of those things should be taken into account as we're looking at how we're categorizing and prioritizing the projects that we're placing within the sales tax funds. Here you see a breakdown of our revenue earned by month, and so this is the, the, the latest month in December, and as you see, those collections in December came up just a little bit from the previous months as we would have expected. And so um, this is the first two uh, columns or the first two blocks here are the complete fiscal year 2019 and then the complete fiscal year 2020, and then we break it out by month here starting in our fiscal year 2021. This is a very uh, interesting picture here, and this revenue really is a revenue year over year comparison. So as time passes, it'll tell us an interesting story. So far this year, we are exceeding uh, collections over the same month of the prior year. So our um, current fiscal year, fiscal year 21 is this light blue line, and you see how it is over all of the other months before it and we'll continue to add points as we go out so that by the end, by the time we reach the end of this fiscal year and this latter part of the graph will actually have three you know different years to compare to when looking at month over month how we've been able to um, you know how it compares as we look at each of the individual years but so far this fiscal year we are exceeding what we collected in that same month in the previous year. And then this is our uh, picture of our revenues projections versus the actual collections, and this is as of March 15th. So as it shows here, since the sales tax was uh, from its inception all the way up to that date of March 15th, we have collected over 163 million, spent about 96 million of that so far. Uh, and in our current year collections, which, is the, which are these boxes in the middle, our complete projection for the year in terms of how much revenue we would collect was a little over $76 million. We've collected $47.5 million so far. So we've earned 62% of our total uh, projection within the first six months of the year. So we're exceeding our projections in each month so far. And then this is just a breakdown of what it was for the actual quarter two. So good news, and then um, this is uh, a graph that just shows every single month of collection. It shows you uh, what month we were actually collecting in when we actually receive those funds, and it usually goes about two months behind, um, we'll, we'll actually receive the funds about two months from when they were collected by the state. And then, you know, we're showing for FY20 how that those specific numbers for each month, followed by the projection, and then what we've collected in FY21. So again, that comparison here, that difference is showing that we've actually exceeded our original FY21 projection in each month so far. So great news, and we've been continuing to 
revise that, see what's, you know, how we're over collecting or collecting more on the revenue than what we had originally projected and plowing that into uh, additional projects. So that brings us to the end of our uh, PowerPoint presentation. So I'll pause there to see if we have any questions before um, we go into the actual financial reports. I had a question that I, I noticed that it, I believe the number was 34% of funds had been spent on schools over 51 years old or something like that. Right there. <clears throat> yes. Um, of those schools that are greater than 51 years old, are we actively looking ahead and planning to uh, replace them? Well, has we that, has the replacement of schools been accelerated by the sales tax revenue? Well, we do have um, two schools that are on the replacement uh, are on the slate right now for replacement: Franklin Park and Cypress Franklin Park Elementary and Cypress uh, Lake Middle School are both on the slate for replacement in uh, starting the projects in this current year. Uh, those are the two that had been identified some time ago as needing to be replaced because of the conditions of the building. There's a whole process that you have to go to, through with the state to make sure that you, your school can be or your facility can be approved um, for demolition and replacement. I, I, I'm not exactly sure that there are, we do have others that are in consideration of replacement, but at this point in time, they are not in the uh, long-term plan at this point. Because I think some more analysis still has to take place about whether we believe we'd actually be able to get state approval for complete replacement of a building. It's remarkable that 21 of our 89 schools are over 50 years old. Yeah, we've been around a, a, a while, a long time. Yeah. Any and other questions? Yes. So on the analysis, and just I think it's a slide before or uh, before that. Yeah. Um, one thing that jumped out at me. I know you're looking at this. Um, that 17% of our schools are 37% at the high school level. Are you seeing? Are you concerned at all with the spread? I know you're watching it, but is there anything that's jumping off at you that that is? I think well. Right now, I think we understand what the spread is because there were certain uh, projects that were more pressing and urgent to do. And some of those, I think uh, you were pointing out here, like at high school, they're only 17% of our schools, but in this, they're 37% of the expense. Well, some major projects happened there. Some of the major re-roofs, uh, you know, major HVAC replacement type things that are some of your higher value projects were happening there because that was some of the priorities. And I think that it's a, you know, marathon, not a sprint. So we just have to make sure that over time, these should be, it, it, you know, it should be evening out so that we're showing that we're equitable in how we're spreading it out. Or we know for sure that the projects that we have, um, designated for this, there's a priority for them. And I think Mr. Rickenbacker wanted to add to that, please. Come on, come on up. Remember there's, there's an economy of scale, a roof replacement on an elementary school versus a roof replacement on a high school is about a third. So obviously you do an HVAC, it's a third of the price of a high school. You do a window replacement, it's a third of the price. And, and, and a roof replacement, same thing. So that's why whatever we're doing in the high schools right now from a maintenance perspective and or construction, it's going to be a much larger component simply because of economy of scale. I just thought that the high schoolers were harder on the schools than the <laughs> No, I, I, I go as the new member of the school. <laughs> right. And, and Ms. Malay? Yes. And I also wanted to add the number of students served at high schools is probably more than double at, at middle school. So another column we want to add there is the number of students served, not just tier. Yep, and very true. I think great data. I think this is fantastic. Uh, but I agree, it might be off because it's just by school and not by students served. Yep. Yep. And that's actually one of the questions I was going to ask is whether or not that would be beneficial. Because I, I see by level, by location, by age, but by students served, I think would be even more powerful, especially when communicating to the public that are most of the parents. <laughs> right. Understood. Yes, we could add that information. Yes, sir. Second question. Uh, you go down a few slides to the um, 
projected versus actual in the first two years. For those who are this this one. One slide up, please. Uh, on the left hand side, one one thing that concerned me when we started this committee two years ago is that we immediately increased our expectation, our projections for the sales tax revenue, and I was concerned about that because over yes. two years it was a couple hundred million dollars. Yeah. After two years, it looks like we're about thirty six million dollars short of the of the projection. Mm -hmm. Have we considered? recalibrating the total 10-year projection to understand what that might, might mean over those 10 years? Mm -hmm. Yes, we're, we're in the process of, of doing that now as we're analyzing all these numbers that you see here. We're going to um, you know, re recalibrate and see how the, the original 10-year projection compared to the remaining years that we have and update those projections as we see it to be necessary and then bring that back to the committee when we're finished formulating the next five and 10 year capital plan with those new projections. Any, any other questions? questions? I believe we have two motions to be dealt with. One is the acceptance and approval of the financial report and then the acceptance of an approval of the project report, the individual projects is falling within the parameters of the sales tax. I would entertain motions for both of those. And I think we could do them individually. Is that a separate presentation? There was Patty, move. I, you know, the problem with these masks is you don't know who made a motion. Can I, I thought I heard a motion. Patty, Joe, Joe Patty. Thank you, Joe. Is there a second to Joe's motion? Fred, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Was that for both motions, Joe? Sure, yes. <laughs> That's what I thought you said, Joe. <laughs> And I think if I could just take a one second to point out, you all also received two uh, financial reports as well. One that was an annual report, budget to actuals, and it had all of the information for 2019, 2020, and 2021 fiscal years, that is, and cumulative totals on there. And as well, you received um, the quarterly report that encompassed quarters one, two, and three of this fiscal year, and then ending um, at the quarter three ends at 331, but the information is as of 315, as we had to pull it together for our meeting today. So much of the information in the financials we pointed out um, in the PowerPoint as we went through, but for those of you who really, you know, want to dig more into the, the, the numbers, budget and actual in each of the different categories and the breakdown within those categories, which is where we have the specific project listing for, um, you know, each of the categories, then that information is there for your consumption as well. Next agenda item is member comments. Are there any member comments? Who was the second? Uh, or questions, I would open that up also. Okay. Amy, I have one question for you. Has this, you know, you're the chief financial officer of the district and you had this, this, um, this massive thing drop in your lap that was good news. Has it, has, have we, should we be changing anything on how we're approaching it? I mean, have you, has it gone well the last couple of years? Does it need any fine tuning, any direction from this group? I mean, talk to us a little bit about your perception of the impact this has had on the district. And okay, good, thank you. Good. Um, so yeah, it, it has been a, a very great, a great thing. As a matter of fact, that we have worked, um, you know, that we really worked so hard to, you know, get public support on and thank goodness it, it worked out the way that it has. Um, I think over the past couple years, it actually has worked really well. Um, one of the things that has helped us, and I'm not saying that we didn't have growing pains, we definitely had growing pains with the additional revenue and making sure that we had um, the staff on hand to help support that because, you know, with these additional funds comes additional work for everybody, managing the projects and making sure that we're doing that correctly. There was a challenge there and, you know, and I would say we probably still have a challenge there, but we're, you know, working with it as best we can at this point. 
Um, we had some growing pains and continue to refine uh, the way that we uh, establish priorities and assign projects to each of our different funding sources, including sales tax. So we'll continue to work and refine that process. Uh, but one of the things that I think has helped us very much is in working with this committee, understanding how we package the information to be able to tell a good story. Everybody's not necessarily going to the website as much as we would like. So I think um, that one of the things that we have to focus on here going into the future is, as you all pointed out, and we completely agree with, making sure that we're adequately communicating to the community as to the impact this is having on our schools and on the community and continuing to make um, good decisions as to how we identify and fund projects so that we get the most out of this time period that we have with this funding source. Sure. Hey, that, that was one of the reasons I brought up about the press conference. Do you think that the press conference will, will, more people will listen to that and, and, and watch that than just send something out to media? Okay. I will, I, when, you, when we, you brought that question up earlier, I took note of that. I will make sure um, to discuss with our communications area when you know, we could possibly implement that, when that would be most appropriate, how we do that. So I will definitely do that. I, def, I, I, I do have some strengths, I think, but I know that media and public relations <laughs> probably is not one of those. So I rely on, you know, we rely on you all's feedback and feedback and guidance from our experts in communications to help us get there. So we will definitely have, you know, communication on that. I debated in my mind when I asked the question whether to go back and forth with it, but I didn't want to do that. Okay, all right, understood. Okay. Understood. So we, I will definitely take that, that suggestion back so we can determine how, how do we implement that and get the most um, exposure out of that. Mm -hmm. Amy, I would just offer up to you that, that um, this committee, seeing as how we won't meet for three months, you'll have much longer than the president's 63 days to hold your first press conference. So <laughs> you can give us a report as to what you think about that later. Okay. <laughs> so does anyone else have anything else? Mr. Shaw. I would, yes. I just had one comment. I know you're talking about having the community to recognize what the sales tax is doing, and I had brought this up to um, one of the staff members about as you're going along, and we have the sign saying this is your tax money at work. Yeah. However, with the number of people that are bilingual or speak another language, I suggested that we have a little line underneath in Spanish or uh, I think Creole is only like 1%, but Spanish would be very uh, helpful, I think, and I had mentioned it. I don't know if anyone picked up on that, but uh, realizing that we are, are a um, multicultural uh, organization to attract others to see what we're doing because it's their tax money as well. Noted. I'll, I'll check with our our maintenance folks. Are the ones that you know help us handle our uh, signage and placing it at the appropriate places. So I would definitely follow up with them on that suggestion and find out how we could move forward. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, Mr. Chip, I publicly want to thank the school district. We did an event last week at South Fort Myers High School and really uh, stressed their technology group, and they did an outstanding job can't thank the school district enough for their partnership and was really impressed by, by what you've done with the technology and what, what we are capable of. So I wanted to say thank you. Oh, thank you. I will make sure. Oh, our technology. Folks, Mr. Alton, he's still in the back, so he heard the accolade. So kudos to you, sir. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. We really do appreciate those, those words of encouragement. Really appreciate it. Being at risk for having Mazurkowicz criticize me for a meeting that ran over one hour, no. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Actually, uh, I just make one, one, one oh. quick thing. Um, under the duress of Mr. Atkins, I would like to throw my name in the hat for the recording secretary position. Oh, cool. Okay, thank you. Ah, very, much. <laughs> very nice. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I will, yeah, yeah. You have been appointed. <laughs> um, I, I, would, I would request 
a slight tutorial? That would be fantastic. Yeah. Absol absolutely. We'll be more than happy to. Very good. Mr. Schiff, I have Thank, Thank you. So we have a full May slate, Fred. Oh. That's it. <laughs> May I make one more? Yes. Motion to adjourn. Oh. Can All in favor? <laughs> Go on. I had another announcement from the oh, board. There's Never one mind. More That's all right. You, you, go uh, ahead. I, I just wanted to say um, that on the 30th, you mentioned about the Estero High School, uh, at the Estero High School, they're having the uh, public meeting uh, tonight, and I believe there's another one that's coming up. And on the 30th of March, I think it's next Tuesday, mm -hmm. there will be a public meeting at Veterans Park Academy to discuss whether once they move the uh, LAMS students to the new building, uh, the future of the old building and the current Veterans Park Academy. And that will be at six o'clock at Veterans Park at the, um, in the cafeteria. So please let everyone know to come out and see you know, what we're doing and have their voices heard as well. And uh, just finally, thank you so much for all that you all do. And if you want to know how important uh, the sales tax and all of the operational things, every time we look at our uh, agenda, the largest part is operations. And it's all the things that Mr. Rickenbacker and operations teams are doing. So we're quite busy. But thank you all for your time. Thank you. Yeah.